Thanks for being with us here on East Idaho Newsmakers. I'm Nate Eaton. You probably recognize this guy, local boy. He's been on television the past few weeks. Well, I guess years ago too. Kind of all the time, right? <laughs> it's been pretty frequent. Yes. yes, he's clothed today, but this is Jeff Zausch with Naked and Afraid XL. Is that, right. is that what the most recent episode was? Yeah, XL? Naked and Afraid XL, 60 days this time. 60 days, so catch people up. What happened? What is this show? How did you end up on the show? Because this is not your first time being naked on television. No, no. Um, <laughs> funny enough. We could say that. Uh, yeah. it, it started about six years ago when, uh, when Discovery Channel first reached out to me for Naked and Afraid. It was a new show at that point. Nobody had ever heard of it. And they asked me if I wanted to be one of the first. Um, so, of course, I said yes. That was successful. Uh, then they brought me back for their all-star version of Naked and Afraid XL 40 Days in Columbia a couple of years ago. And, and now they thought, geez, how far can we push this? So uh, they brought me and my partner back for 60 days this time. 60 days. And tell people who your partner was and how you guys got lined up. Uh, my partner was Laura Zara. And um, she is uh, also one of the fan favorites of the show. Uh, one of the most, well, I would say the most successful female to ever do Naked and Afraid. And so they, they put the two people together that they thought might actually have a chance to make it. Um, and we didn't even know if we could make it. It was a wild ride. Did you really not think you could? Or did you go in there like, I'm gonna make it, doesn't matter what? Both, we went in there humble. So we went in there knowing nobody's ever done this before. We'd be stupid to think, absolutely, 100%, I've got this. Um, we, we felt we could, you know, we felt we could, but we also knew that so many different things could take us out uh, throughout a 60-day challenge. So how do you prepare for that? Do you? <sighs> you don't, really. I mean, I honestly, the biggest preparation I did was I walked without shoes for six weeks. Mm. Um, and I ate as much as I could, everything I could, um, hitting fast food, pizza joints, you really? name it. Um, I gained uh, 45 pounds in six weeks to prepare. And you were pretty fit. I mean, you're a pretty fit guy. You work out, you, you seem pretty healthy. Right. But you knew that you needed that extra weight to survive. Absolutely. Yeah, your body needs fat and muscle to burn uh, on those days that you don't catch anything out there. And so I... Uh, I put on 46 pounds uh, before I went out, and I'm glad I did, because I ended up losing 56 pounds. Um, so it was uh, just the right amount. Okay, so you guys go, and do they, how do they, do they drop you off? Obviously, you have cameras around, mm -hmm. so are, is there other, like, producers? How, how many people are there with you? Usually there's uh, one producer, a couple camera guys, a sound guy, and some local assistants carrying things like batteries and gear. Um, and they drop us off um, as far as a vehicle can travel uh, at, the end, at the edge of the jungle. And then we hike about five miles into the jungle. And then that's where it all begins. And you don't have much. Not much at all. No. What, what do you have? Uh, they allowed me to bring two items this time. That you um, could pick? Yes, that I could pick. So I brought a knife, of course. And then I brought fishing line with several fishing hooks. And you carry that in a, in a, what do you call it? A, a satchel. A satchel. Mm -hmm. No clothes. No clothes. No shoes. No shoes. No gloves, no nothing. Nothing. Same with her. Right. And you're, you, from that moment, your goal is make it 60 days. That's it. From day one, the moment we shake hands and say, you know, nice to meet you, you're my partner, we committed to each other, we will make it together. Whatever it costs, whatever it takes, we will be there for each other because it truly took both of us um, having to rely on each other at times in order to make it. And, and you dealt with all sorts of weather. Oh my goodness. Right? I mean, yeah, I mean, this was the South China Sea in the middle of summertime. I mean, it was, we got hit by a super typhoon on day three. Um, the same storm killed thousands of people in the Philippines and we were living in a cave when it hit. Um, I mean, it doesn't get any more real than that. So where does the crew stay? The crew, they hike in and out every day, five miles in, five miles out, every single day with all their gear. And they have, you know, lodging accommodations um, where they're able to charge batteries and dry out clothes. And, you know, they have to, 
um, they have to be eating and stuff if they're gonna, you know, film that. So, but, but, so there are moments though where it's just the two of you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. At least half the day is just the two of us. Did you ever get to go shower or eat a burger or something <laughs> like oh, that? No. We yeah, talked. It's, it's legit. Like you're out there. Yeah, it's 100% real. And uh, we talk about food every single night. <laughs> the crew guys show up in the morning. We can still smell the toothpaste on their breath. Uh, uh, it, it's a, it's the real deal. Okay, so you mentioned the weather being crazy. Were there other th times, moments where you thought, I don't know if I'm gonna make it through this, or, or our lives may be in danger? Many, many times. Uh, one night, my partner Laura got bit by a venomous centipede, uh, one that the locals had told us is deadly within hours of being bit. And, and the, the crew members, the, the evacuation team, they're five miles away and they're not gonna be able to get to her and get her to a hospital in less than two hours. And so I literally thought my partner might die that night. And that was, that was the first time I think ever on Naked and Afraid I've ever been truly afraid. So what'd you do? I, uh, we have a emergency walkie-talkie where we're able to radio for emergency help. So I called in a full evacuation um, and I, I told them her life's in danger. She's gonna die if you guys don't get here quick. And, uh, and of course they got there too late, but fortunately it wasn't the venomous centipede that the locals had told us about. It looked identical in every way other than it wasn't venomous. And so did they bring a doctor to you? They bring a, a local doctor from the Philippines along with a bunch of local strong men to carry a stretcher. And did they, they took her to get checked out? Um, they didn't. They, did, that, they, they examined that, her there. Right, they examined and, her. By that time, they realized, well, if, she's it, okay. yeah. if it had been the venomous one, she wouldn't still be with us. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. So what did you guys do to, to buy the time? I mean, that's 60 days, kind of like survivor-ish, I guess, but you're not doing skills or, or contests or things like that. You, you would think that we would be bored or something, but I don't remember a single day, the entire 60 days, where we weren't busy. I mean, it is unbelievable. It's like working 15-hour days every single day in the heat for 60 days straight. It is incredibly exhausting. If you're not fishing, you're hunting. If you're not hunting, you're, um, you're you know, chopping down wood, you're smoking wood, you're digging a fresh water, drinking well. Um, I mean, there's always something to do that can enhance your chances of survival. Did you ever starve like a day where I, we can't find anything to eat, we don't have anything to eat, or were you always able to find something? Uh, there, were, there were many days when we went without eating anything all day. Um, I think the longest maybe we went is five days, probably after the typhoon hit. It blew out our water hole. It flooded the entire jungle. It killed all, all the snails. It killed all the worms. I mean, it, it, everything was dead after that storm hit. Um, so we probably went five days without eating a single thing when that happened. And we had to, we had to start from scratch. We had to find a new environment and uh, find new uh, fishing areas. And uh, it's, it's a constant battle out there. Do, do you win a million dollars at the end? <laughs> no. 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 I, I mean, uh, uh, I lo a lot of people ask me that. Yeah. They said, oh, well, what do you win? And um, I'm actually grateful we don't win a million dollars. And the reason is, is because if that was the case, people would do this for the money. And if they did it for the money, then you wouldn't see people out there doing it for the pride of doing it, for really stepping up every second of the day and, and really taking things to the next level. But what, why do it? I mean, I get, I get that, that that's an incredible thing to say that you've accomplished, but most people watching are going to be like, no thanks, and then you're naked. <laughs> I think the reason why is the same reason why in the past two or three years we've seen the first person to ever climb El Capitan solo in, in Yosemite, the first person to ever traverse Antarctica unassisted and now the first two people to ever survive naked in the jungle for 60 days. It's the same answer. It's because it hasn't been done before. I guess you get over the, the fact that you're naked pretty quick. Very soon, within two days. It's, it's whatever. It's gone, it's yeah. gone, yep. yep. Once you get hungry and thirsty and you, you ha your feet are infected and you have sun blisters all over your body and being bit by ants and, and other things, uh, you being naked is one of the least worries you have. What was the hardest thing of the whole 60 days? 
This time around, probably um, not seeing my, my girlfriend or my dog or, you know, the people at home that you care about because um, it was such a long time that we're living there. I mean, on, by day 60, we are natives in, in every aspect. We have our house. We have our grocery store, you know, our fishing pond. We, we, uh, we, we have everything we need to survive as long as we need to out there. And so it's, uh, you know, being away from home for that long, it's hard when you come back to readjust and, and realize that you don't have to survive anymore. Yeah, in a way, was it kind of because it had become your home, was it kind of hard to leave? It was. It was. I remember on morning of day 60, my partner and I were sitting on a rock by the ocean and we were just looking back at the jungle thinking, we're never ever going to be back here. This is it. Our home that we once fell in love with, we're never ever coming back. So you come back. We just, before you got in here, we watched a video you made for your girlfriend where you have a bushy beard and <laughs> your hair's crazy. Holy crap, Aaron. I did it. I freaking did it! 60 days, baby! 60 days! Ah, look at me! I mean, were you mentally there or, or did you realize, yeah, I, I gotta get kind of back to normal? I, uh, no, I wasn't mentally there as we are accustomed to sure. in civilized life. I was, um, I had been dominating Mother Nature for 60 straight days. I was feral. I was, um, you know, I, I, by that time, I loved pain. I loved inconvenience. I loved challenges. Um, and uh, when we get back, we have all the comforts of modern life. We have mattresses and bottled water and lighters to start a fire and just unbelievable conveniences that you could never truly appreciate unless you, unless you went without. Do you remember the first thing you ate, your first meal? The first meal we ate was um, the producers had a buffet of food on the beach for us. And uh, I remember Oreos and pizza and peanut butter and jelly and Doritos and watermelon and bananas and like, oh my gosh. But isn't there the worry that if you binge that your body will kind of react? Did you have that where you might have thrown it up or felt sick? You don't care. You, you don't, don't care. care. You're just like, give me the food. You want food so bad. We, we all threw up. We all had diarrhea for days. You know, I'm sure we shocked our bodies, yeah. something terrible, but uh, we didn't care. By that time, all the food that we could ever want, uh, it, it's like going without anything, absolutely nothing, to having everything you could ever dream of, just like that. Was there one particular food you craved, you wanted? Oreos. Oreos was your... Oreos, food. hands down, the number one food I wanted. And what about your partners? Did she have... Uh, she wanted Doritos. Hmm. That was, that was her jam, so. Okay, so you, you get home, but then something serious happened. I mean, you talk about shocking your body, but you were hospitalized for a few days, few weeks? Uh, several weeks. I was hospitalized in the ICU in Dallas, Texas, um, in the uh, infectious disease uh, ward of the hospital. And um, I actually had a couple diseases growing inside of my body that I had brought home with me. Uh, bacterial meningitis. Oh my gosh, that's serious. Um, very serious. And uh, I, I also had leptospirosis bacteria throughout my entire body, as well as uh, the Philippine version of Rocky Mountain Spotted Fever. Jeez. So I was, I mean, my body was completely infected and uh, I, I'm lucky to walk away from that one. You got home, when did you realize something's not right, that you actually went to the doctor and they said, this is serious? I was actually at a Dallas Cowboys game and um, I was popping a leave the whole game because my headache, my head hurt. And uh, the headache just got continually worse. And, um, and then the next morning, I couldn't even open my eyes, couldn't even get out of bed. And uh, my girlfriend rushed me straight to the hospital. And, uh, and they diagnosed me quickly. Within 12 hours, I was in the ICU, hooked up to antibiotics. And uh, it was a scary deal probably scarier than doing the 60 days, right? Oh, oh for sure, for sure. I mean, the, uh, the 60 days, I know what I'm signing up for. Yeah. You know, I know I'm gonna be in the jungle for 60 days and bad things are gonna be happening to me. But when you come home, you expect life to be great. And I, you know, I was eating again and you know, I was at a football game and just living life. And then bam, just like that, uh, nearly died. How are you doing today? Great, yeah. great. I, um, the, the only, uh, long-term effect, I lost my hearing in certain frequencies, 
so I can no longer hear an oven timer or oh, certain things work. like that. So yeah, so I mean, I'm not a good cook anyway. Do they think so. that might come back or? Uh, no, it's permanent, um, wow. it's permanent. But I got lucky, um, the majority of people that have uh, this degree of bacterial meningitis, a lot of them go permanently blind, permanently deaf, um, lo lose motor function. And so the fact that I can't hear the oven go off, I got lucky. Oh man, that's scary. Is it true that President Trump tweeted you? Or <laughs> is that fake? Uh, President Trump's a big fan, evidently. Um, he, he is Congratulating big, you, basically, right? Like, he, he is a big reality television fan. Um, I mean, it's, it's kind of weird thinking about him watching Naked and Afraid in the Oval Office. Um, but, uh, but yeah, I guess he's a big fan of the show. I guess he hasn't called you to congratulate you or anything? No, we haven't officially got a White House invitation wow. yet. You got a Twitter mention, so. <laughs> there you go. Would you do it again? I would do it again. It was one of the most profound, wonderful times of my entire life. Um, of course, it was also one of the most painful and torturous, but usually the hardest things we go through in life are, um, leave the biggest impact on us. and. Uh, so I absolutely would do it again. I, I hope they invite me back for something even greater. And your, what does your girlfriend think of all this? She, uh, she knows I'm a little bit crazy, but um, the, the, the producers have actually, uh, they've asked us both if we want to go out as a couple and take on 21 days together. So we're still talking about it. We're still you know, deciding whether or not um, uh, we want to take the physical health risks to do that. But, uh, who knows, maybe you'll see us both out there. You mentioned earlier that, that Laura was their best female contestant and that's why they had her back. That would mean that you're the best, best male contestant I, to have you back. I mean, that's pretty, three times, this is um, your third. Yeah, it's, uh, it's very, very humbling. I have completed the most days of Naked and Afraid uh, than any other person besides my partner, Laura. And so, um, and, I mean, it's kind of crazy. What was once just a one-time thing has now become a, uh, a mild hobby. So. And we talked last time that Jeff was raised in Pocatello and you still live here most of the year, part of the year, and, and uh, it's cool to see this local guy on national television representing Idaho. Do you ever foresee maybe doing like your own show, like your own type of survival show? Absolutely. Um, uh, that's been the goal uh, for the last several years and now I'm currently pitching my own show to networks as we speak. and so. Um, it's, a, it's actually going to be a show about uh, religions all over the world. Um, so I'm very excited to, um, to get to travel and show people um, what faith is like in um, the unknown parts of the world. Oh, that would be cool. So you'd go to these small villages or whatever and talk about how they worship. and Right, right, yes. Um, uh, yeah, we're very excited about it. We don't know what network it's going to be on yet. but. Uh, but that's the next big step, so that'll be nice. I'll have food and clothes, so <laughs> I'm moving up in the world. Yeah, bottled water. <laughs> uh, what do you say to the, the kid out there watching, the person out there watching that says, I wanna do that, maybe not naked and afraid, or maybe naked and afraid. I mean, how did you get through to get on the show and continually go back? What, what advice? Uh, for the folks at home that are inspired or that even have a desire to do something greater than what is typically possible, I invite them to push those limits. Uh, you never know what is truly possible unless you give it a shot. Um, and most things in life that people think are difficult or, um, or borderline just not feasible, most of the time those are the, the most worthwhile things to do. Or crazy. <laughs> or, or crazy. Sometimes they're a little crazy. Yeah. But you're right, you learn from them. You, you're real active on social media, so do you want to mention your Instagram and, and Twitter and all that for people that might want to follow you? Yeah, yeah, folks can find me on my Facebook fan page at Jeff Zausch, um, my Instagram at Jeff Zausch, um, and also my website, jeffzauschtv.com. Uh, I am now offering uh, wilderness adventure uh, camps and, and things of, of all different skill levels. So if people want to go climb a mountain or want to go survive in the wild with me, um, I'd love, I'd love to host them. Oh, that's cool. I have a feeling we'll be seeing more of you on the big screen, maybe a documentary or a film or something. It'll be exciting. Yeah. Thank you very much, Jeff Zausch. We talked with Jeff, man, a year or two ago, two or three years ago. We'll link down to our previous conversation before he went on Naked and Afraid XL. Thank you very much, Jeff, and thank you for watching. Have a good week.